The date was October 23rd, 1593. The place was the governor's palace in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, and Gil Perez, a palace guard, was exhausted. Chinese pirates had assassinated the governor just the night before, and tensions were really high. After a grueling shift, Gil leaned against the wall just to take a quick little nap, but when he opened his eyes again, something had changed. Actually, everything had changed. Because he wasn't at the governor's palace anymore. He was at the Plaza Mayor in Mexico City, 14,000 kilometers away. Records of the time tell of a confused man that the police found just wandering around the streets of Mexico City wearing the uniform of the palace guard from Manila, claiming he had no idea how he got there. He told them about the governor's assassination, but of course they hadn't heard anything about that, so thinking he was either a deserter or just a crazy person, they threw him in jail. Two long months later, a ship arrived from Manila with news of the assassination of the governor. And of course, the Mexican authorities were dumbfounded. How could he have possibly known this? His story matched their story in every little detail. And eventually, one of the crew members of the ship recognized Gil and could vouch for him. And the Mexican police released him to go back to Manila. It's the only time in history that a person was found innocent on account of teleportation. Russell Stewart and Izar Hussein both asked, is teleportation possible? The definition of teleportation is the transfer of energy or matter from one point to another without transversing the physical space between them. If Gill's story is true, he experienced what's called spontaneous teleportation, where a person or a thing disappears in one place and reappears somewhere else without any effort on their part. So this is a bit of a subcategory of the paranormal, and there's plenty of sites and articles out there that you can go check out, but we're not going to talk about that here. We're going to talk about teleportation as an actual scientific thing Thing that can be done and what potential possibilities and drawbacks there could be from that. So there's really two types of teleportation. The first one involves something of a space-time warp. See, much like the Alcubi air drive, if I could create a warp bubble around my body, then space and time could bend around me, allowing me to go from one place to another at extremely fast speeds and at Earth scale almost instantaneously. But you gotta be careful because if you don't get just the right distance and angle, you could wind up either embedded in the Earth's mantle or flung out into space. This always gets me about time travel too. You see, the Earth is rotating at 1,000 miles per hour and it's going around the sun at 65,000 miles an hour. If I were to go back in time even 10 minutes, I'd probably wind up drying out in the middle of outer space. So I think in order for this method to work, you actually need a second teleportation machine that you would arrive at to avoid having being flung out into a really bad place. Of course, we're a far way off from actually being able to manipulate space-time in a way to make something like this possible. Or are we? In 1955, an author named Morris Jessup had just published a book on UFOs when he received a mysterious letter from a guy named Carlos Allende. And Carlos, in this letter, talked about a secret government experiment that was conducted during World War II that he called the Philadelphia Experiment. According to this story, the United States Navy was working on applications of Einstein's unified field theory in an effort to make their ships invisible. But the ship that they rigged to conduct this experiment, called the USS Eldridge, it didn't just turn invisible, it actually vanished completely and then reappeared in Norfolk, Virginia, 200 miles away. There it was witnessed by the entire crew of the USS Andrew Furseth, including Carlos Allende. Then, right in front of all those people, the ship just vanished and reappeared back in the Philadelphia shipyard 10 minutes later. And if that wasn't crazy enough, there are stories about crew members that rematerialized embedded into the steel of the ship. And a couple of them apparently reappeared um, inside out. And there's another story of a sailor on that ship that was at a bar like a couple weeks later that just disappeared right in front of everybody. The Philadelphia Experiment is considered a hoax by most investigators, but it's still a real staple of paranormal enthusiasts around the world. In fact, there have been two movies made about it. But regardless of what happened on the Eldridge, the idea of creating warp bubbles around things like ships or even people, the energy required to do that is still just impossibly huge. But subatomic particles do it all the time. Even atoms have been seen to disappear in one place and reappear in another. Could we do that with every atom in our bodies? Assuming we had a powerful enough computer and enough precision, could we manipulate every single atom to go from one place to another and rebuild you in another place? This is called the information theory of teleportation. This might sound crazy, but we're already 3D printing human organs. How long will it be before we could actually rebuild things on the atomic scale? But this brings up an even more interesting question. Does the person who rematerializes at the other end of that teleportation is that actually you? There's a famous parable that goes back to the ancient Greece called the Ship of Theseus Paradox. And it basically says that the King Theseus had a ship and he sailed it around his kingdom. And over time, different boards and different parts of the ship got worn out and got replaced with new ones. Eventually, the entire ship would be rebuilt with new parts. 
Is that still the same old ship? Is that still the ship of Theseus? To make the whole thing even more confusing, imagine if somebody took all of the old wood that had been taken off the ship and rebuilt a new ship with the old wood. Which one is the original ship of Theseus? It's a philosophical question with no real hard answer, but the same thing applies to teleportation. If you were taken apart atom by atom and then reassembled somewhere else, is that still you? But here's an even bigger and creepier question. Does your consciousness transfer over? But what would be the experience of departure? Would you see a flash and just appear in this other location? Or would the process of dematerializing you atom by atom just be... the end? In order to be teleported, are you actually sacrificing yourself? I gotta be honest, the more I think about this, the more I'm really creeped out by it, because we would have no idea that was happening. The you that reappears in the other place would have all the same wiring and all the same function in your brain and all the same memories right up to that point of teleportation. So to the person reappearing on the other end, it would all be seamless. But to the person at the point of departure, it might just be the end of consciousness. You might not actually experience anything on the other side of that. It's basically death. Every single person that we teleport is dying, and we would have no idea we're doing it. I mean, think about it. Every single time James T. Kirk beamed up to the Enterprise, he died on the other end. I just ruined Star Trek for you. Seriously, if you knew that when you teleported, you wouldn't have the experience on the other side because your consciousness would just end, would you do it? Can you even say that you're the same person on the other side, or are you just a copy? Put your beautiful minds together and talk about it in the comments. As always, links to more information is down below, as well as a link to the Facebook page where I post other little nuggets of info about this topic all throughout the week. Be sure to share this on your social media of choice, and if this is your first time here, I hope I earned a subscribe because I come back with more brain-twisting stuff like this every Monday. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next time. Alright, love you guys. Take care.